Hi everyone, my name is Srivatsan Krishnan and I'm a PhD student at Harvard. We are excited to present our work on The Sky is Not the Limit, a visual performance model for designing compute system for autonomous machines. This work was done in collaboration with Dr. Paul Watmo from ARM Research and Dr. Alexandra Faust from Google Brain Research. Here is the executive summary of the talk. Autonomous machines, such as drones, are complex cyber-physical systems, and compute is just one of the many components. Performance models, like Roofline, have served computer architects well in designing compute in isolation. As we port these compute to drones, we will see why we need tools to help us understand various bounds and bottlenecks. We propose a Roofline-like model called F1 Roofline to help computer architects systematically understand how to design optimal systems for drones. Using our FN model and relevant case studies, we show that a high performance compute does not always translate to high robot performance. We make a case for cyber physical co-design, that is performing algorithm hardware co-design along with cyber physical parameters in a drone. Autonomous machines, also known as robots, are becoming increasingly pervasive and comes in many forms. For example, on the left-hand side, we have a robotic arm, which are commonly found in factory production lines. As we go towards the right, we have autonomous machines that also move, such as drones and self-driving cars. In this work, we particularly focus on aerial robots, which is an instance of an autonomous machine. Hence, as an architect, before designing system for drone, it's important to understand the various challenges in this domain. The first challenge is that autonomous machines are complex cyber physical systems. For instance, a drone has mechanical components such as a frame, electromechanical components such as rotors, few sensors such as RGB camera or time of flight sensors. And lastly, they have some kind of onboard compute for processing the autonomy algorithms. Thus, it's important to understand that compute is one of the many components in a drone, and it's crucial to understand what implication the selection of other components have on design of onboard computer. Another challenge is that diversity in size, weight, power, also known as swap, and its implication on selection of design of compute. To understand that, let's take a simple graphic which plots the size of the drone on x-axis, the battery capacity on the y-axis, and the endurance, which is also known as how much time the drone can fly on a single charge on the second y-axis. The first category of drones can be classified as nano UAVs. These drones typically weigh around tens of grams. Due to its small size of approximately tens of millimeters, the battery capacity around is around hundreds of milliamp hours. And due to its limited battery capacity, the endurance is less than 10 minutes. Thus, due to its low battery capacity, typically microcontrollers that have power budget of less than 100 milliwatts are used in these drones. The second class of drones are called micro UAVs. These weigh around hundreds of grams and have form factor of around few hundreds of millimeters. Thus, these class of drones can accommodate up to thousands of milliamp hour batteries and have endurance of up to 15 minutes. Due to its relatively larger size, they can accommodate hardware accelerators such as Movidius and HTPUs, which have power budget of less than one watt. The third class of UAVs are called mini UAVs. They are much larger in size and weigh up to a kilogram. Due to its larger size, they have higher battery capacity of thousands of milliamp hours and higher endurance of 30 minutes. Due to its larger size and battery capacity, general purpose CPU GPUs which have power budget of around 5 to 30 watts are used in these drones. Thus, as an architect, it's important to be cognizant of this huge diversity in swap. For instance, the compute system designed for mini UAVs may not be even feasible for nano, U nano drones, and system designed for nano drones might not be performant for mini UAVs. Now, we look into why we need a performance visualization model. As a computer architect, we have many choices to make. First and foremost, depending upon the swap constraints, we can start by selecting an off-the-shelf compute platform. Amongst off-the-shelf compute platforms, we have many options to select from. How do we know that a particular selection of off-the-shelf compute platform is optimal for a given drone? Can we select off-the-shelf compute platform in an ad hoc fashion? 
as we change the drone, does the same compute also result in optimal performance? Or do we need to actually design a hardware accelerator? Designing hardware accelerator is not trivial and iterating over a few parameters such as memory size or number of processing elements can quickly result in hundreds of possible potential hardware accelerator candidates. For instance, let's take this hypothetical hardware accelerator design space where we have hundreds of possible hardware accelerator candidates. Assuming that all these candidates fit into the form factor of the drone, now do we choose a 200 FPS design or go for a lower power design that achieves 25 FPS or choose a more balanced design that achieves uh, 75 FPS under one watt. Outside of compute, do we also need to consider drone's physics? Likewise, what about sensors? Given so many options, it would be beneficial to have a visual performance model that would give us insight into which are optimal, which are not optimal. Hence, as computer architects, we need a systematic way to go about either the selection or design of onboard compute for drones. Hence, we introduce F1 Roofline, which is a roofline-like model that can help computer architects to approach this problem systematically. F1 Roofline model plots the relationship between safe velocity of the drone and its decision-making speed, called as sense-to-act throughput. The decision-making rate in a drone depends upon multiple components, such as how fast it can sense the environment, which is a function of its sensor. Also, it depends upon how fast it can process the sensor information to make high-level decisions, which is basically the function of the autonomy algorithm and onboard computer. Lastly, it also depends upon how fast it can translate the high-level decisions into actions. For example, stopping the drone. Hence, Sense to act throughput is the throughput of this pipeline shown in this figure. The relationship between the decision making rate and the velocity results in a roofline like behavior similar to the roofline model. There are two lines a slope and a horizontal line. The points where the two lines intersect is called knee point. The corresponding projection on the x axis is a constant for a given drone configuration. This constant is the upper limit to the minimum decision-making rate Fk required to maximize the safe velocity Vmax as shown in the y-axis. Fk creates two regions where the sense-to-act throughput is lower than Fk and the sense-to-act throughput higher than Fk. In the latter region, any value greater than Fk will result in no meaningful increase in safe velocity. This region is called body dynamics bound as it's independent to the throughput or the, the decision-making rate. The left-hand side of the region is called compute or sensor bound region. Since we saw that compute and sensor play a role in decision-making rate. In this region, improving the sense to act throughput can increase the safe drone velocity. We can further divide the sensor can compute bound region to identify which of these regions are bounded by the compute throughput and which of these regions are bounded by the sensor throughput. It is only in the compute bounded region, shown as uh, the shaded region in gray, that any architectural or microarchitectural optimization, ranging from a choice of a transistor to the choice of runtime or algorithm, will have an impact on the decision making rate. If you are in the sensor bounded region, which is shown as uh, an orange, unless and until the sensor throughput is increased, any potential performance improvement because of architectural optimization cannot be realized. This is denoted by the sensor bound ceilings. Likewise, if you are in the body dynamics bound region shown in red, unless and until the drone physics is changed, performance improvements due to either optimization in sensor or optimization in compute cannot be realized. This denotes this is denoted by the uh, body dynamics roofline. Thus, we see how F1 roofline model can help us understand different bounds. Another utility of the model is to help us understand what an optimal compute design is for a drone. For instance, we know that the knee point is the minimum required decision making rate to maximize safe velocity. Thus, 
any combination of algorithm, hardware, and sensor that results in a sense to act throughput to the left of F cape will be suboptimal design. And one needs to bridge the performance gap by F k minus F sub. Likewise, any combination of algorithm, hardware, and sensor that results in a sense to act throughput to the right of F k will be over optimized, giving us a slack in performance given by F over minus F k. Thus, similar to the original roofline model, the F1 model can also give us insights about the optimization effort required to design an optimal system for drones. We mentioned that the relation between safe velocity and decision making weight results in a roofline plot. Let us understand why that is the case. Let's go back to the flow of information from sensor to action. How fast we can safely travel depends upon whether the physics allows us to move that fast and how fast we can respond to an external stimuli. The decision making rate depends upon the individual performances of the sensor, compute, and flight controller. Whereas the physics is governed by the physical parameters such as maximum acceleration, denoted by A max, and how far we can sense ahead, which is denoted by D. Luckily, the prior work has formulated and validated the relation between how fast a drone can travel as a function of cyber physical components across different environmental conditions. To intuitively understand the relationship, let's consider a drone with a sensor whose field of view is denoted by a green region. With the sensor available, the drone can sense obstacles up to a distance of D. With the rotor-based propulsion, and considering all the payloads, the drone can accelerate up, up to A max. With the autonomy algorithm and the available sensing and compute, it can sense an obstacle and make a decision by at most T sense to act. Then the maximum velocity the drone can travel without colliding with the obstacle is given by the equation. Now any velocity lower than V is considered safe. V safe is being the upper bound. However, any velocity that is higher than V safe means the drone cannot stop without colliding with the obstacle. Now that we have a fundamental relationship that ties the cyber and physical components in the drone, we start from this relationship and sweep different reaction times and corresponding safe velocities by fixing maximum acceleration and sensing distance. We observe that it results in a profile where it gives an illusion that decreasing key sense to act maximizes the safe velocity. Instead, if we plot B versus one upon sense to act, we see that after a certain value of one upon T sense to act, the velocity saturates for all practical purposes. The parameter one upon T sense to act, whose unit is Hertz, can be interpreted as the throughput of the sense to act pipeline or the decision making rate. If you look at the plot carefully, it resembles like a roofline plot for multi-core multi CPUs that computer architects are familiar with. One interesting quote from the paper is that a model need not be perfect, but it has to be just insightful. In the similar spirit, our F1 roofline model is a simple model that gives insight about various bounds and designing optimal system for drones. Similar to the original roofline model, where optimizations add new ceilings and memory optimizations add slope, we observe similar effects with our roofline model. For instance, any change to the acceleration adds new ceilings. Likewise, any changes to the sensing range add new slope and ceilings. Using our F1 model, now we obtain some interesting insights, such as high performance compute does not always translate to high robot performance. To do that, we perform characterization study by considering different compute platforms on a given drone. We choose an Aztec Pelican drone with 60 FPS sensor. It is a commonly used drone platform in aerial robotics community. On top of this drone, we add new compute platforms such as Xavier, TX2, NCS, and Raspi as the onboard compute payload. The baseline configuration is called no ACC to suggest that no onboard compute is added to the platform. In this configuration, the drone can achieve its maximum acceleration. If we add Xavier to this drone, then we see that due to the added weight of the compute along with its heatsink, it reduces the maximum acceleration 
capability of the drone. This results in a new ceiling, which caps the safe velocity for this drone configuration. Likewise, if we add TX2 platform to this drone, we observe that it lowers the maximum acceleration, but not to the extent of Xavier by virtue of weighing less. And lastly, in Raspi and Intel NCS, the degradation and maximum acceleration is lowest because of it being lightweight. An obvious question that we might have is, can we do anything about the weight of the compute? It turns out that computer architects can account for platform weight. The TDP of the system has linear correlation with the heatsink weight as shown in the figure. So as an architect, we can design system that has lower TDP. And also, today's compute is often functionally distributed across many boards. We can integrate many of these functionalities into a single SOC chip. Next, we will look at what happens if we choose a different autonomy algorithms to run on these platforms. We choose two popular NN-based autonomy algorithms, namely CAT2RL and DroneNet. A Xavier-based drone already has lower acceleration, thus a lower safe velocity. We considered a sensor throughput of 60 FPS, which is denoted by uh, FS. Running CAT to RL on Xavier achieves a compute throughput of 25 Hertz. Thus, the sense to act throughput of this drone configuration is also 25 Hertz. Compared to the no ACC case, the knee point, which is the optimal design point, corresponds to a sense to act throughput of 45 Hertz. Thus, if we improve the performance of CAT to RL running on Xavier to 45 Hertz by any architectural optimization, we would still not see any improvement in safe velocity because we are in the body dynamics bound region. The only way to translate the new found compute performance to safe velocity is to achieve the same performance by weighing less. For example, an optimization technique can involve achieving Xavier-like performance with a much smaller TDP. An Intel NCS drone achieves a much higher safe velocity due to its higher maximum acceleration compared to Xavier. Now, if we run the same CAT to RL on NCS, we achieve a compute throughput of 1.3 Hertz. Since we can't make decisions faster than 1.3 Hertz, our safe velocity is compute bound, which is denoted by the green ceiling. The knee point design for the NCS powered drone is very close to the no ACC configuration, suggesting that architecture optimizations can potentially result in increasing the safe velocity. The goal of such an architectural optimization is that it has to deliver 33x more performance than what is currently achieved by running CAT to RL on NCS. In comparison, for CAT to RL algorithm without any optimization, a Xavier powered drone achieves higher safe velocity, whereas an Intel NCS powered drone has the highest potential for architectural optimization. Yet, both of these configurations achieve lower safe velocity compared to the no ACC drone, suggesting that there is still room for improvement. Now let's look at a different algorithm called DroneNet, which is a tiny version of ResNet model. Running this algorithm on Xavier Power Drone achieves a compute throughput of 210 Hertz. Likewise, an NCS Power Drone achieves about 110 Hertz. Now, even though Xavier achieves 2x more compute performance than Intel NCS, an Intel NCS powered drone can actually achieve higher safe velocity due to a higher roof line. In this case, we show that a high performance compute, which is the Xavier, does not translate to high robot performance, which in this case is safe velocity. In summary, we show why autonomous machines are complex cyber-physical systems. We also show that there is a need for a visual performance model. We show the utility of F1 roofline model and how it can help architects in designing optimal systems for drones. Using a characterization study, we showed that a high performance compute does not always translate to a high robot performance. When we are performing algorithm hardware co-design, we also need to be cognizant of the cyber physical parameters. You can find more characterization study in our paper. This concludes my talk. 
Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And here is my contact information.